Okay, so what are we looking at here? Okay, so this is a, our first ICCD image of the 2021 experimental series. And the ICCD is an extremely fast camera, so it can take an image in as little as a billionth of a second, a nanosecond. So there's a five nanosecond exposure. What we're looking at is a view from uh, a window that's on the side of the chamber. It's a magnified view, and we're looking through the veins of the cathode. Okay, so the black in here is the veins. This is the cathode vein. And we're looking at the current sheath as it moves over the anode. So which so, direction is it moving? So it's moving this to, direction? No, it's moving, it's moving in the direction way. of my thumb. Okay. So to the right. So northeast. <laughs> <laughs> right, if this was a map. Okay. So this is an excellent high uh, resolution mm -hmm. image. What's the black spot? That very black spot, I don't know. No? Okay. But what's, what's the white the line? General, the general... What's this? What's I'll this explain line? the whole thing. So, this is moving. We've seen this pattern before. What happens is this is the front line, and this is what we are pretty sure is a shock wave. And you notice one thing about it is that it has a very sharp uh, right-hand uh, boundary, right. which is typical of a shock wave. Uh -huh. Behind the shock wave, in other words, plasma that is in the current sheath, but the shock wave has not reached, you see filaments, yeah. and they're fairly okay. regularly spaced. But please help me out. Where is the hole in the anode here? Is it northeast or the is it anode, The hole in the anode is off the screen to the right. Northeast, okay. Right. Okay. So this sheath is moving at about um, 10, up to 10 centimeters per microsecond. So that's 100 kilometers per second. It's pretty speedy. But this shock wave is what causes us problems. Because as the shock wave moves past the filaments, what you see is it's building up filaments. It's building up ripples at right angles to the filaments. You see these little lines, which are very yeah. high resolution. So this is being created by the shock wave, and it's disrupting the pattern of the filaments. So you can see the filaments are now, even though they're pre predominantly vertical, they're also starting to get sort of diagonal. And that's the problem. When they get to the pinch, they aren't well organized. Mm -hmm. We're not surprised that there's still a shock wave because our theory is that the shock wave is caused by oscillations in the current. And when the switches don't fire together, you get big oscillations in the current because, you know, first you have a switch give you know, most of the switches, nine of the switches are firing together, so they give a big shove mm. to the current. But then these latecomers come along and they give additional shoves. Yeah. And this feeds into the natural oscillation of the circuit. So it's very much like the kid on the swing. If you keep pushing the kid at the same rate as the swing is oscillating, the oscillations get bigger. So that's what we're thinking is causing the shock wave. But we're not worried about it because our first step is to get all of the switches to fire together. And then with all 16 switches firing together, we'll be in a much better position to see whether our changes to the external circuit has reduced the oscillations 
and if not, what further work we have to do. Now that work can all be done in this general experimental campaign. We call it an experimental campaign basically from the time we start experimenting with a assembly in the chamber to when we take the chamber apart again. So we can make all these changes in the external circuit without changing what's inside. Okay. So we'll be doing that in September.